So what is Camino? That's a really great question because you will be using it all your years here at SEU. <laughs> so yeah, what is Camino? Camino is Santa Clara University's primary LMS, which stands for Learning Management System. For most classes, this will be where you find the syllabus, lecture notes and slides, assignments and homework. You'll also turn them in here too. And it's where your grades will be posted by your professor. Basically, almost everything related to classroom, classroom stuff will take place here in Camino. And an important question that we wanted to answer that actually popped up in the chat, what does Camino have to do with Canvas? So basically, Canvas is the base name of the software. Here on the left, we have a picture. It's Canvas by Instructure, which is the company that owns it. And then people who buy it, like SCU, can give their version a special name. So they decided to name their special version of Canvas Camino. I think it might be based off like a road that's nearby. I'm pretty sure. There's like a El Camino Real. I think that's where they got their name. But our version of Canvas is called Camino. It's important to note that your friends in other schools might use this LMS too, but they'll probably call it a different name. And from this point onward, we're going to exclusively be calling this LMS Camino. And so with um, all that like delineation, we can talk and give you a Camino overview. So first and foremost, how to access it, you can use this nifty little link right here, or I guess it's just the how to access it. It's just camino.instructure.com. Bookmarking it is super important because you will be, it will be your one-stop shop for almost everything and anything school related. And so it's super useful to have that on hand. I personally have it as one of the little icons below my Google search bar, just so like it's super, super easy to access. Or if you are feeling more like you want to access the SCU portal and kind of gauge your other options in terms of like everything else, because sometimes I do that where it's like, okay, I need this from this thing, this from this thing, you can go to scu.edu forward slash apps forward slash login and find it through there. Both are easy ways to access Camino. I believe starting in school or I, I'm not even sure now. I'm not sure if they've had y'all download Duo yet, but you will be prompted with like a Duo authentication in order to um, like access the app. And so that is always something to keep in mind. Micah was lovely and placed what you need to be looking for in the chat. So feel free to do so. Thank you again. And then we can move on to some important pages that you will be able to see on your Camino. So modules split up the course by week or by topic, depending on the class. There are also different modules for like um, introductory things. It really depends on the professor. Um, and some don't even use modules. I've been in like one class where they don't. And so that is something where we recommend prior to moving in, or at least school starting, a, a couple teachers will in fact like publish their Camino page. Um, and this is like true even within like winter or going into spring quarter as well. So it's always nice to kind of give it a gander. One of my professors sent out our syllabus and published our page literally like two months ago. And so just keeping an eye out is super helpful. And the modules are kind of like folders for everything. You will also be able to view your upcoming and overdue assignments. There will be a special notation for overdue assignments that really invokes that anxiety. I can speak from experience, but they are available in your class page and your calendar as well as two different mechanisms with which you can kind of like check them. You will also be able to view your grades. Your overall grade and assignment grades within your class pages are visible. Please note that there are some professors who are just like, no, <laughs> you cannot see your grades. So this isn't always a given, but it is a super useful tool just because you want to know how you're doing. You want to know, like TVH, I use it where I'm like, okay, how, what do I need to get on this final or midterm to still keep my grade in this class? So like, it's super useful, super helpful. Um, and I got a direct message in the chat where we will be having questions at the end as well, but I'll answer this one. Have the professors already assigned assignments or, or modules we do already? This is a case-by-case -case basis. Some professors will come in to the school year prepped, like quarter laid out, week-by-week -week module ready to go. Some, I kid you not, probably published like all of our modules week five 
for to study for midterms. So it really depends on the classes you're taking, the professors who are teaching them. Um, but it's always nice to check. So just like just log into your Camino and um, just see what's up. That's always a good thing to do. Um, also, because we are in the era of Zoom and uh, people are out and about, it's college, everybody has different things to do. That sometimes means you can't make it to class. A lot of the time, um, professors will record them. This is a case-by-case -case basis, though, because, like I said, just overall blanket statement, everything's a case-by-case -case basis, so I don't have to keep saying it. Um, but you can view your recordings of classes, including the board on which they write and, like, the professor and, like, what they're saying and stuff. And so you can find that in your nifty um, class recordings page. You can also view your discussions. So a lot of times your assignments will literally be like, read this or watch this and respond to two things on the discussion board. Like I'm sure y'all have had experience with that throughout high school. And so that's basically what you're doing here. This is where you can find all your discussions. And then your syllabus. Um, this lists out your professor's contact, which is super useful, covered topics and timeline, expectations, grading. A lot of professors will also include their office hours. So that's super useful if there's anything you need to know. For the most part, like I know in like, for example, in high school, I didn't really read my syllabi because I was like, what do I need to know? I've been at the school. But like it's super useful because there is a lot of differentiation between professors. Um, some professors will be mad and strict in their syllabi but not really throughout the year so it really just depends um, but it's a nice baseline to establish your expectations for the class and what you should be doing in addition to this sometimes their syllable their syllabus page just isn't like they'll publish their syllabus on like the main page of their um, class page and so that's also something to like keep in mind because sometimes you can't find the syllabus and you're just like I don't know what's expected of me um, so that's just something nice to keep in mind as well and then there are other outside integrations that you can find as well. So depending on your professor, some additional links may be available. Some that we've encountered as well as um, My Math Lab, Master in Chemistry, Chemistry Grade Scope, Perceptive. Um, I also had in vivo, which was I was able during my Spanish classes, I spoke to someone in the country of origin. And so then like I could like speak to them. I was not good at it, but I still did it. And the, it's just super helpful if there are any outside sources, like outside programs that your professor recommends for you or like for like makes mandatory throughout the class. More often than not, you'll find a link to that on your Camino page, which is why we say that it's a one stop shop for everything that you need. Um, but yeah, that is all for the important pages. I know that was kind of a lot of information, but rest assured, it is going to be mad easy to adjust. Once you are in it, you're in the groove, you kind of figure out everything that you need for your classes. So don't worry. <laughs> all right. Thank you very much, Michaela, for going through all those very important pages. Um, for these next few slides, we're just going to take you through some of the sample Camino homepages that um, I personally had throughout uh, my first fall quarter. So um, this was my Camino page for English 1A, which is a core class for critical thinking and writing. And as you can see when, um, so the homepage is like where you land on, like whenever you click your class, and, like your like list of classes, because once you log into Camino, you'll be prompted with like list of classes or depending on um, how you set it up, maybe it'll show like your assignments or you know, like group up other sorts of things certain categories but I had it where it would just show up different boxes with all of my different class in them and then when I clicked on them I'd land on the home page and for English my professor did it so that um, it would type out a little agenda every day and then it would set be separated by week by week and here we would be able to see like what we're doing um, any links to, to like the assignments that we're going to do that day and homework, all that good important stuff. And you can sort of see the layout of how Camino is organized. You have the left um, red bar here, which is all like the big important like pages you have. And then within that, we have another list here that are that is like um, all the pages that your professor will allow you to use and like all the relevant stuff for that class. So this one was for English. And then similar to that, this one was my chemistry homepage. Um, on this homepage, um, it's actually the modules page. So just clicking on the class redirects us to the modules page. And then our professor had it set up so that he had 
recent announcements on the top, such as like the final exam, what's going to be on there. And then once you scroll down, this is how like the modules look. There's different sections. So the first one just exams like sample midterms, the actual midterm, what was it after we took it, and then like the key. And then if we scrolled further down, which um we can't since it's just like a picture, but it had like all his lecture slides and lecture notes, and we could access anything that we might have missed in class. And then also on the left for like that list of stuff from home announcements, et cetera, we can see some of the more custom links like my lab and mastering. Um, for chemistry, we did a lot of practice problems on the mastering chemistry site. And here's just an example of an outside integration that's really easy to access through your Camino page. And then lastly, this was my homepage for um, Chemistry 11 Lab. And then um, this was like a, a Camino page that was like a lot more students were in it since it was just one um, Camino class for everyone that have a, had a chemistry lab, uh, as opposed to usually um, each section of a class will have a different Camino page so that the professor can post like that day slides for that class and then this day's slides for that class. But here, um, it's another custom homepage where they had like quick links to the syllabus, the lab manual, your um, digital laboratory notebook, like template for that. And then all the different experiments we did, as well as a preview of like the pre-lecture slides um, that we're going to do that day. So, yep, this is a quick peek into what Camino looks like. Um, you'll be visiting these pages a lot throughout your time here at SCU. And yeah, that's sort of what to expect from the Camino homepages. Super exciting. Um, Yeah, next we're gonna go into submitting assignments cause like in class you typically do have to submit assignments. I know it's horrible, Um, but yeah, it's a thing that you're gonna have to do. So um, here's a little screenshot and on the right hand side, you can see like a submission details kind of like square box area. Um, And that's kind of like, what it'll look like when you submit an assignment. There'll be like a little red box that's like submit here. Um, and that you just click that um, and you can turn in assignments. It can be links, it can be files. Um, and those are usually the common ways to turn in your work. Like if you download like a Google doc or like a Word um, doc, Word file, um, and you can submit those. Um, other times it's in, like, you have to take a quiz um, to like show that you actually like read the topic and that'll just be like, take the survey or take the quiz um, and then you can submit that like a regular multiple choice or free response and then sometimes you're able to like type into the box the text box directly um, and you can mess around a bit with like type with like titles like text font sizes um, italics bold that kind of stuff to make it more readable um, and again like Michaela said this is definitely one-stop shop you can do all of this on Camino directly uh, and there's a lot of like multiple choice buttons, text editors that'll make your submission process like super smooth. It's pretty similar to probably what you all have been using throughout like high school as well. Um, in terms of submitting assignments, it's pretty straightforward. But yeah, there's a lot of options. Um, but yeah, most of the time you will just be like downloading or uploading links. Um, next, seeing your grades. I know we talked about this a little bit earlier, but this is kind of more of a visual idea of what it's going to look like. Um, so you would click into your individual class, um, that you're looking at. So say like in this case, it's, it looks like English 1A. Um, so you would just click into that class and there's that little tab, um, on the left hand side. And one of those says grades. So you click on grades and then this is kind of what would pop up. Ethan's like a genius. So he has a hundred percent in his class, which is absolutely wild to me. Um, but yeah, hopefully your grades will look just like that too. <laughs> Um, yeah, so it'll show you your grades for your individual assignments. And then at like the bottom right hand corner, it's like calculate um, based only on graded assignments. So if your professor like uploads all the assignments for the quarter and you obviously don't have a grade in them, it'll like bring down your grade, which is not a fun thing to be seeing. So I would recommend clicking that to boost the ego a little bit. Um, that's personally what I do. Um, and it'll show you your like overall percentage and your letter grade up on the top right. Um, and then if you look right under where it shows the letter grades, it has um, that little button that says um, show like what if scores. We'll go into that a little bit later, um, but that's like an important button to keep in mind. It's, I don't think it's available for every class. I think your professor has to like toggle it on or off, um, but for the classes that it is available, it's really helpful tip that I think Ethan's going to be sharing in a few minutes. 
but yeah, your grades are obviously pretty important. Um, you can't really, I don't think you can see your overall grades on your computer, but if you download the Camino app on your phone, um, on like the, the opening dashboard, like page that opens up, you can see your letter and percentage grades, but that's also something you can turn off. It's like, you don't want to see that and be like upset or, or something. If you want a little surprise when you open up your grades later. Um, but yeah, you can see that on iPads and computers, but I, or on iPads and iPhones, but, or phones, but I don't think you can see them on the computer itself. So for a computer, you will have to go into the individual classes to check out your grades. Yeah. Uh, and then the last thing that we're going to be talking about in terms of navigating the Camino website itself is accessing the databases. So when you open Camino on the left hand side, there's going to be that little bar of things which has like account, dashboard, all that stuff. Um, and at the bottom of that is a little tab that says library. So once you click that, it'll move you over to this little page that you see in the middle, which is just the website for the university library. Um, but this is something that I find really useful. I'm again, personally in STEM. So uh, whenever I have to like do research um, or like find articles for any like chemistry classes um, or any of my like engineering classes in particular, I find this to be like a helpful tool because I don't want to be like navigating like 500 pages in the university library website. It's good, but if you get lost in it, it's very hard to find yourself to get yourself out of it um, personally from what I've seen. So I like clicking on the Camino like website because I always have that tab open on my computer and then just going from library um, to this. And then on this, as you see, there's like that one search, Oscar databases, that whole like string of tabs. Um, and each of those is useful for like its own purposes in terms of finding journals, scientific articles, databases, um, all of that stuff. Um, and this is going to be a really useful hack to use, at least that I found it a helpful hack to use. Um, during your critical thinking and writing sequence, which or CTW, um, because I know for my CTW, at least, and for a lot of other ones that I've heard, um, you your class like goes to the library or like a librarian will like, come to your class and they're going to teach you how to use um, Santa Clara's online databases. We have a lot of really great stuff um, in terms of like accessing scientific and published articles getting behind paywalls, all of that. And it's really, really useful in any field that you really want to go into. Um, so knowing how to like easily navigate between all of those little tabs and how to easily get there is going to be really like useful in terms of like being able to quickly research stuff or pull things up, um, especially during that like little session that you'll have. Yeah, same. I think I had like two classes, um, which was all dedicated to library resources like Ethan. So <laughs> Yeah, it is definitely a useful little life hack. Speaking of useful little life hacks, um, we're going to delve right into the little tips and tricks section of our presentation. Each of us are going to share something that we found really, really exciting or helpful on Camino. Hello, I'm back. Um, this is the first one. It's not like super pertinent. I just personally really like it. It's because I am... I, I do best with organization when I it's color coded. So all of my um so all of my like classes and stuff in my GCAL are like color coded and it's super useful just because for like a memory thing. Um so you are able to color code your classes on Camino. For example, this is one of my upcoming courses. And um, for example, I usually use yellow for my religion classes, or like I have like four different colors I choose from. So I would pick like this like brownish amber color. Um, it's just like the equivalent of picking a specific color notebook for a certain subject. It doesn't necessarily like, it's more of like an aesthetic and also just like memory thing, just because it helps my brain to keep everything in their particular colors. Um, so if you color code with other aspects of school or life, this is super useful. Um, and yeah, <laughs> it, it like, and if they have like main pictures like this, it would just tinge the photo a particular color. Um, but I think that this is just like a nice way to customize your Camino and make it just like nicer to look at just because I learn better when things are nicer to look at. Um, but yeah. Super awesome. Colors are always useful. All right. Uh, my tip will be using what if scores to set a goal for your next assessment. So if your professor does grades on Camino, what if scores are an excellent tool because they let you see how an upcoming exam or project will affect your grade. So um, if you all remember the little grades page that we had on the other slide, you can actually just click into each of the different entries and the scores 
that are listed there. So for example, here on this, on this slide, we have like project two, and then I have, there's the little 100 out of 100 there. If you click on that, you'll be prompted with a text box to um, like enter a what if score. And like, um, I believe I entered 90 as a test. And then once you enter that and you go back up to the top right, where your total grade is posted, it will now reflect calculating your total grade with that what if score in mind with a little disclaimer saying, nope, this is not your official score and a button underneath to go back. But I found that doing this anytime like a big paper was coming up or an exam was coming up was really useful to sort of gauge um, what I what score I should like go for, um, if I'm in any danger when it comes to my grade or just really just setting a goal to like a goal of a score to reach. And um, having goals like this and things to work for can make classroom experience a lot more exciting because you have something to work for and it's awesome. Yeah, not gonna lie, that tip like saved me um, in Calc 4 because I, I really did need to know what I needed to get to, to maintain a passing grade in that class, but it's fine. Um, anyway, our last little tip is from me. Um, and that is adding Camino to a calendar. Um, I personally use Google Calendar, but whatever calendar you use, this tip should work. Um, yeah, so like I was mentioning way back, um, that little tab on the left-hand side, which has the library tab, also has a little calendar tab. Super fun. Um, so click that and it'll open up to this little page that you see in the middle. This is like half of the page that you'll see. You'll obviously see the full month. Um, but at the very bottom right hand corner is this little button called calendar feed. It looks really unassuming, but it will change your life. I promise. Uh, so if you click that little button, it'll pop up like this little page that you see on like the right hand side is going to pop up and it'll say copy the link below um, and paste it into any calendar app that takes iCal feeds. So you click that little um, like link, you like copy it. And then if you go into like, like I again, personally use Google Calendar. And if you go into Google Calendar, there's like um, a little place where you're able to insert like a new calendar. Um, and then from there, you like see everything essentially. Um, it's really helpful. So on your Camino calendar, um, you'll see things like assignments um, if your professor posts them on the Camino calendar, which again, like Michaela said, case by case, but usually they'll post it on the Camino calendar. Um, any sort of like um, events or like sessions like I know there's like the Bronco series that you do um, and the technology series that you have to do before you enter um, on campus that are due I want to say September um, for y'all um, so those will pop up in your Camino calendar um, I'm part of like the maker lab which is like a thing um, in the engineering building where you can like do fun like 3D DIY building stuff. Um, and so those events and like those um, open office hour times are on my Camino page. Um, you can see like your advising, like I have um, for like my engineering advising sessions um, and registration, those tabs are always available on my Camino. Um, at the, I, I wanna say, I wanna say winter quarter, maybe spring quarter, you'll have to do something called an embrace session, which you don't have to worry about that now. Uh, but that's basically like a getting to know people diversity and like being like polite and like socially nice to others event, um, which is like required for everyone. Um, and that event will also show up on your Camino calendar. So basically, if you don't feel like you're going to be looking at your Camino calendar a lot, or if you want to like manage a lot of different things that you might have going on, like club events, personal things that might, you might have, jobs, anything like that. Um, if you add this link into a personal calendar that you use online, um, you'll be able to see like everything in one place. And then as you might know, you're able to like toggle calendars on and off um, on things like Google Calendar. So if it's getting like overwhelming, seeing all your assignments and stuff, um, you are you can like obviously turn that off. The one thing this won't do is add like your classes into your Google Calendar. So what I had to do was I used to manually add like my classes and their office hours onto my Google Calendar but like all my assignments, any like important tests that might be coming up um, and any other like additional events that I might be needing to look at would all pop up um, on my Google Calendar when I looked at it so I could see everything in one place. So that is my super amazing tip that I learned from 
and a Bronco exchange session last year, uh, which has literally saved my life. <laughs> um, yeah, now we're gonna go straight into the q and I know we had um, a question earlier on in the event, but if there are other questions, feel free to unmute yourself, type them in the chat, whatever you fancy, whatever is tickling you the right way. Um, we are here to answer your question. Michaela, don't laugh at me. That was a perfectly normal sentence to say. Um, whatever, yeah, whatever y'all want, feel free to ask us questions and we will be here to answer all of them. Um, okay, first question. Office hours or tutoring? That is actually a great question. So typically office hours, you just drop in. Um, if you're, you a lot of times on your syllabus, the professor will say available by appointment or office hours. So like if you can only meet within a particular time frame, just hit them up, let them know. And more often than not, they'll be like, Slay, let's schedule an appointment. But office hours tend to be dropped in. It's just if you need something, um, just pop in, stay for as long as you need. Very similar to our OL office hours that are actually being held by Joy, Nat, and Emma. Plug for them. Um, it's just, it's super nice. It's a really great way. And it's also a great way to get to know your professors because like from like having had professors that I do know and professors that I don't really like really know, it's super great to like get to know the people that you are learning from and you get to know like why they're passionate about it. It's just a great way to know your professors and it's great networking. So there, I know that people who have like gone to office hours just like to like just because just because they want to get a better grasp of it, but also to like talk to their professor and it's led to like internship opportunities. So it's a great thing to do and stop by. Um, tutoring is very similar if you need something. And I know that there will be certain groups like within like study groups within the actual classes as well. Also, the um, math learning center and the hub I believe you schedule appointments with them as well, but they are also resources that are free to students. They're free to everyone on campus. Um, and those are things that you do sign up for. I know Micah has some experience with the hub if you want to go into a little more detail about that and maybe the MLC as well. Yeah, for sure. So the hub is um, our little writing center that we have in the library. Um, and they do a lot of really fun stuff. Uh, but the main thing that they do is help like, revising or even starting any sort of essays or written projects that you might have including research proposals um and like grant proposals and stuff which is really cool um so yeah if you just go on like the hub's website you can schedule an appointment either in person asynchronous online um whatever you prefer or whatever works best with your schedule and you can meet with a person um and they'll like go over whatever it is that you're trying to write or that you've already written and that you want to review um but yeah those are i think only appointment only or like they're very rare drop in hours um and then for the mlc that's the math learning center um the math learning center is like great um they i believe have like they have drop in hours sometimes um but for the most part you can get like appointments with them uh, with like a specific tutor or um they have study groups for most um uh, intro level of math classes so like math i want to say not eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. I think those are the classes that they have um, study groups for. So they're like groups of like 15 people um, and you just sign up. Um, like if you sign up early enough, you'll get put in like a scheduled time slot for study group. Um, and then there's also MLC tutors that are available um, that you can like meet with one-on-one -on -one, um, either by appointment and sometimes by drop-in. But yeah, great question. And Ethan is so spitting facts in the chat. The hub is absolutely amazing. Ask him for the slides if you want more information on them. And we can send the link slash QR code to that um, a little towards the end. But yeah, feel free to drop any more questions. Can you unsubmit an assignment on Camino? Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna copy Michaela again, case by case. Um, it depends. Like usually for like quizzes and such, you can't really resubmit them. Um, for some like other classes, like maybe like like an English class or something like that, you might be able to resubmit an essay. Um, if you like typed in the wrong thing, I know I had um like in like Chem Lab, um my OChem Lab. I we were not allowed to resubmit um our lab reports 
after you submitted it once. Um, so honestly, yeah, it really depends on your professor. They'll probably say, or like at the beginning of the quarter, like, hey, you're allowed to resubmit assignments if something goes wrong. Or you can like usually see on Camino, like, oh, this is how many submissions you have left. Um, or it'll just like not let you unsubmit it. And then you can, like, I don't know, you just have to deal with that. Um, usually I would recommend like emailing your professor or your TA, whoever's like on call, I guess. Um, and being like, hey, I accidentally submitted the wrong thing or like I submitted the wrong doc. Um, can I like email this to you or can you unlock it for me? But yeah, I don't know. Do you guys have like different experiences? From um, my experience, I'm pretty sure there's no unsubmit button. However, you can do like uh, multiple attempts when it comes to like certain assignments. So if you submitted your like your big essay and then you realized you forgot like a period somewhere and you want to go and like fix that really quick, you can resubmit it again. And then your professor will have access to like both files that you submit. And then you just comment or reach out to your professor saying, um, I meant to submit this one and not the first one. Because once you press submit on something, more times than not, it's going to Camino and you can't take it back. So pressing submit is a pretty momentous occasion and you want to make sure all you patch up any like writing you have or like make sure you're ready to submit whatever you're going to submit. Um, if your professor uses different like platforms or outside resources, there may be chances to unsubmit your stuff. But if it's on Camino, your only option is to do another attempt or another submission and then let your professor know. Yeah, and more often than not, um, if you, because there have been instances where I have, like, it's been, like, the nick of time, like, the like 11.59, I will submit an assignment, and it'll be the wrong one, and then I'll, like, resubmit, and then um, I don't, like, have time to, like, tell my professor, and from what I understand, they usually take the most recent iteration of your submission, like Ethan said, you can't really like take it back, but you can just pile onto it and then they'll take the most recent one from the pile. It also doesn't hurt to just send them an email, obviously. Um, but it is super cute because there's little confetti usually, which I really like. Um, and it's like a little prize for doing your work. Um, but yeah, you can't unsubmit, but you can resubmit assignments, like Micah said. Um, and you can't really, it depends on the professor for yeah, like quizzes and tests and stuff. No, the little submission does it's hit so different. good. Some some of my professors have like customized them. Like I've gotten like like lab or like biology, chemistry related like beakers oh, and stuff cute. for some of my classes. It's so cute. I get ninjas, which is I don't know why because I'm psychology and child studies, <laughs> but like say. um protecting the children. I guess I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Ooh. that was a lovely question. When are the dates for finals week and midterms? Um. So we are quarter system, so midterms tend to like come and like slap you in the face really early on. Um, I would say for most classes, they start around like week three. At least that's been my experience with most of my classes. Um, but it'll show up on your syllabus. Usually in the syllabus, um, your professor will be like, oh, like week one, we'll cover this topic. Week two, we'll cover this topic. Or they'll have like an exact date listed out like, okay, by like, October 10th we're gonna have our first midterm or something like that um so your syllabus is really where you're gonna get that kind of information um as for finals week I think if you search up like SCU finals schedule it should already be up what like the like theoretical final schedule for the next like academic year is going to be um yeah Michaela just sent the link in the chat that's like not like a definitive list but if you do have to like book flight tickets right now um, I would say it's like a pretty decent list to go off of. Um, but again, like know that like it's not the end all be all because if you're a professor or like if something like changes in the final schedule, you're not able to like re like take those online. Um, and not all professors are gonna allow you to take a final early if you accidentally book a flight during your finals time. You know, so be like really careful about that. But yeah, once you like get your exact schedule figured out, you can usually tell like from like week one or week two what your final schedule might look like. Um, and then if you need to like rearrange things with your professor, like if you're like, oh, I have two clashing finals, which usually doesn't happen. But if it does um, um, or you're like, I can't do like like I personally um, my spring quarter, I had like I think I had my organic chemistry final on a Thursday and then I was supposed to have my physics and my calculus finals on a Wednesday back to back. 
And I was like, I cannot do those three finals like in two days. Like that is way too much for me to handle. So I emailed my calculus professor and I was like, hey, I know you have an 8 a.m. class and their finals on Tuesday um, because I like checked their schedule um, on this like link that Michaela sent. And I was like, hey, can you like add me? Like, can I take my calc final with your 8 a.m. class instead of your 915 class, which would have been on the Wednesday? And my professor was like, yeah, sure. So I was able to like switch that around. Um, so I didn't have like three finals in two days. I just had three finals in three days, which is like not much better, but it's fine. <laughs> it all worked out for me in the end. So that's like definitely a useful little website to be checking out, especially as you near the end of the quarter. Yeah, and for the most part, it will be on your syllabi. Like the professor, they tend to do like full timelines. They will hit you week three though. And sometimes it's really upsetting. <laughs> mm -hmm. And they'll just like, you will probably just have midterms every week until finals week um, after they start, which is like, it's Personally, fine. that never really happened to me, TBH, case by case basis, I guess, but. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I definitely yeah. had like one final every, or one midterm every week since like week three for almost like, yeah, for basically all three quarters actually. So it's been, it's been fun. How about you, Ethan? <laughs> Oh yeah, one midterm a week. That was me. I dropped yeah. in the chat. Um, last quarter in spring, I had one midterm a week for eight weeks consecutively, not and no more, no less, just exactly one exam per week, and it was a wild ride. Let's just say that. Mm -hmm. and I think that's better than having like three exams in one week, though, because like that's definitely what I had. Like OCHEM physics and like biology in a span of like two days. I was like, that is, I don't like this. But yeah, always just check your syllabus. Usually, most syllabi will have the exam dates if you're looking for them. Mm -hmm. Great question so far, y'all. Keep them coming. <laughs> okay, Michaela. Okay. <laughs> I'm so jealous. That's true. That that is true. That um, if all your finals are over and you don't have anything else for the rest of finals week, you can get out of here early. It's mad nice. <laughs> it is. But yes, if you click on that link, it is just broken up. Like, let's say you have like a 915 class. It'll say like, oh, classes that meet Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 915 have it at this X time slot. Um, and so that is super, super helpful. For the most part, to my knowledge, it doesn't super change unless there's like a big like outside source. But like, for the most part, that's pretty reliable. Mm -hmm. I think like the like um one exception to that that I've seen is um if you are in the school of engineering, you have to take the engineering one lab final, which is like the robot showcase, and that is at a very very specific day and time. Um, and that, that I've seen has clashed with other people's finals before, so they have had to like work things around with engineering um, professors and like their other professors. Um, but yeah, other than that, I haven't really seen it change, but something to keep in mind. Any more questions? Keep them coming. I'm having a great time here. We have just above 10 minutes left, so we have room for maybe one or two more questions. Get them in. Ooh, does Camino detect plagiarisms for assignments we submit? Does Mr. Yes. Cohen Major want to answer like with in-depth knowledge? <laughs> no, he doesn't. <laughs> um, usually they um <laughs> if you, they'll submit your or at least for my knowledge, they'll submit like writing pieces, like uh, if you write like essays and stuff through I think it's a Unicheck or um like it's some kind of plagiarism detection software um and so it just kind of like runs it through and makes sure if that's what you're asking but don't plagiarize 
<laughs> I think it also flags you to like go into different websites. Like I'm sure I think like most academic software websites can like flag you if you like go on a different website while you're like taking a quiz or a test or something. Um, like I know when like I had a physiology final that was online. And that was, like, if you went on a different tab or, like, you copy and, like, it wouldn't let you copy and paste. Um, And then if you did try to, it would, like, notify, like, the professor in the background, like, hey, this person switched in and out of this tab. Our final was open note, so it didn't really matter as much. Um, But if it's not open note, like, I'm pretty sure your professors can tell if you're jumping in and out of tabs. So don't do that. (laughs) So uh, yeah, I guess um, just long story short, for big like turn-ins, like uh, major essays and papers, just assume some plagiarism software is going to check your work. Mm-hmm. All right, one more question. Where are notifications located? Um, Michaela, would you mind going back one slide real quick? Thanks. So that little like like red tab on the left, um, if you click account at the top, um, and you click that, it'll have a little button that shows like that says notifications and you can click that um, and it'll go to like your notification like settings and stuff. Um, so if you want to like ever update anything like that, you can see it. Um, but like for me, like I'm looking at mine right now and I definitely see like, um, oh, like I have my due date is like a notification or like an announcement is a notification. And that'll usually just like pop up. Like I have the app downloaded. So if something like if like I get a notification on Camino it'll show up on my iPhone or my iPad um and then on like the web version of it itself it'll like when you go on your courses it'll show like a little blue dot um like if you click the course it'll show like a little blue or like a little red dot um next to like announcements or assignments or grades um and then inbox if you click the inbox button it'll like obviously show your unread messages and stuff at the on the left hand side yeah i you think know, that's oh, sorry very oh, good i was done uh camino notifications are actually super granular and customizable um you can set things to either notify you like just here on the camino page with the little dot as micah said you can have it set up to email you and that let that be the notification and you can have things set up to um send you a push notification on your phone or your ipad so you have full control on what you want to be notified about when it comes to Camino. And it's super handy for choosing, like, I want to know about a due date and I want it to go to my phone, whereas I only want, like, someone replied to my discussion post. I only want that to be on the website, like for that, for example. Oh, that, Michaela. But then, like, I don't click on the notification. I just see it to get stressed for the next like two hours yeah it depends on like what mood I'm in if I'm in a good mood I don't check my grids yes, <laughs> same. <laughs> same. yeah we might be able to take like one more quick question if anyone has any um we still have six more minutes and if you have more questions um you can like of course like private chat us private message us or stay back um where can we find this recording we will go over that it'll be on our youtube but i think michaela will send the exact name of our youtube in like three seconds once we finish the presentation um yeah it'll be on our youtube channel with um a lot of other informational event recordings right but yeah with there being five minutes left in our event, we will go ahead and get to our conclusion now. Thank you everyone for your awesome questions. First, we would like to go over upcoming events. Um, in 30 minutes, we will be hosting Navigating College as an Extrovert. So all the extroverts here pull up and learn about the extrovert college experience. Then tomorrow at 4.30, we'll be hosting more Hullabaloo, a sequel to the first Hullabaloo with Julissa, Gabrielle, and guest stars Gabby E. and Bree. And lastly, after the Hullabaloo, we'll be hosting Among Us Round 2, which I'll be a part of. So if you're feeling a little sus and want to play some Among Us, feel free to drop by.
All righty. Well, that brings us to the end of our presentation. Thank you all so much for coming. And don't forget to stay connected. If you see those two twin QR codes right beneath the connected sign, the orientation experience is entirely yours. We OLs are just here to help make it happen. So if there is an event that you would like to see put on, feel free to scan that QR code and then fill out the event request form. Similarly, if you have any questions but don't really know who to ask, you can scan that QR code to talk to an OL and we will do our best to match you with an OL whose experience best matches what you are looking for. And then we can go to the left. So feel free to join the Discord community. Um, there are great conversations happening with even greater people and there are so many channels you are bound not to get bored there is a general channel for anything any general things um, music gaming there's even voice channels where you can hop on I know that there's a Minecraft realm happening so feel free to hop on there in the middle there Instagram is a really great way to stay connected with us the first two handles right there Skull Diaries and SU Orientation are your one stop shops similar to Camino with School for everything orientation related so you'll find intros for all of your lovely OLs and upcoming information for any events that are happening. Below that, you will find our personal Instagrams. Feel free to hit us up with any questions, either about this event or anything else. We would love to talk to you. And then to answer your question, Colin, um, the YouTube is CSI at SCU. Um, the informational recordings will be uploaded shortly, um, and you can find any informational events that you perhaps missed or want to revisit. So that is a great way to stay updated as well. And Micah was lovely and sent in all of the ads for Instagram. And Ethan sent a link for today's slide. 